all right um, hi everyone uh, uh, this video is more gonna be about Shogun of Gawa dungeon uh, it's a uh, Pen Pandala dungeon in Nolifus Island and it has a pretty interesting mechanism and strategy to beat uh, I did an impertinence achievement with uh, my four-man Iron Man team at level 160. So, just to keep things short, uh, there's a little diagram about a boss in this uh, in this picture, as you can see. Uh, so, to be aware of the boss, uh, keep in mind that it can attract and push a little bit, and it deals air damage. So, if your team is lower level, just Keep in mind, maybe you have a little bit more of air resistance, so you can um, get away with all that damage, you know. Yeah, and uh, another thing is, if you have some class or a build that's more intelligence or fire-based, uh, just take it, because a uh, boss has minus 10% fire resistance. So it would be much, 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 much easier with the fire damage. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Shogun uh, gets vulnerable whenever you cast a Slay Spirit Lantern spell. Uh, you can acquire that spell from the Nolifus NPCs, I believe. And uh, yeah, when you cast it, uh, there's a glyph. Gl the glyph appears and surrounds uh, that area in three circles. I mean, free cell circle area. <laughs> uh, it's an effect of it, and um, yeah, in that area, when that area casts, uh, the shogun becomes vulnerable. But if it's outside the glyph, it will become invisible, and also it summons two of its assassins. Uh, that could be a problem. However, though. Uh, I'm putting the another image more about Slay Spirit Lantern. So if you cast it on yourself, you quickly can uh, push all the mobs around you to each direction they are, uh, but you can only use it once every turn. Uh, so I'm advising you to cast the lantern next to you on a free cell. Um, so the Slay Spirit Lantern can uh, have more longevity that's how we can say it I don't know uh, so we can stay for more and more and more turns and what's the best about it so other mobs cannot go next to you because whenever they come into the area of effect into that glyph they get instantly pushed away back into a normal area yes so um, that's the thing to keep in mind about uh, it might sound a little uh, difficult but yeah it's me explaining so what else do you want <laughs> I can't really explain that well but so yeah uh, you can only win this with a spell I advise you to have spell on all characters in one in case one character dies uh, you cannot cast multiple times the the Slay spirit spell uh, so yeah keep it around the boss lock the boss in the corner uh, cast Slay Spirit Lantern and you'll be good to go. Alright. Okay, so more about mobs. Um, there's gonna be only... Well, what, uh, what I mean only, it's gonna... Two uh, specific mobs, but one of the mobs has like, well, they're two of the one class, you know. <laughs> so there's gonna be one Drumurai, as you can see. And more about it is, uh, it's more a positioning unlock uh, monster so it has two linear spells and it can advance or just to push you back uh, so it can manipulate a little bit your position but it's not as dangerous it don't really hit that much so it's really really good to keep him alive and next to you if you do impertinence challenge keep that in mind uh, but uh, if you want to really I, I put the resistances next to it so you can see what you could plan out in before to kill it if you need it yeah so yeah but it's not it, it's it's actually a key monster for impertinence as I noticed because uh, at start you have to keep him next to you 
just to end your turn next to it. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. All right, moving on on to Kabushido. Uh, this one, uh, there are two of them actually. So in the boss room, there's Shogun, the boss, Drumurai, and two Kabushidos. So Kabushidos are dangerous, but they're easy to handle if you use your brain, unlike me. Basically, they can hit a mid range, uh, but very, very low. So it's not that important. It's very, very manageable, and you shouldn't be afraid of it. However, though, the, you cannot let them next to you because they can hit tons of damage. They can almost one shot you. Trust me. Keep this mob away or uh, MP reduction, pushing. I don't know, uh, blocking with something, that's what makes it uh, successful to, to do this dungeon, just to actually get rid of these Kabushidos fast and efficiently. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's about it pretty much. Yeah, I apologize one more time for uh, bad explaining, it's, yeah, I'm, still, uh, I'm still underway of, of working this through. Uh, but yeah, I didn't put up my uh, builds this time. Uh, I put resistances in case, so you work on fire resistance and maybe more on chance. But I mean water builds, because you have to get rid of Kabushidos and 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 Shogun itself. So yeah, but you're gonna see in a in a video, and I'm gonna explain it more about what I used. Uh, so yeah, and also just before I go and explain the video uh, I would love to I'll, I would love you guys to uh, to leave the comment below or something if you expect like any sort of video from me like maybe you want to see something about more Iron Man like more in detail or something I actually want to do something that you ask or you require you know so I can keep you interested in, in this game mode or maybe you need some information about it so do not hesitate and leave the comment below and yeah all right uh, let's get into the uh, the fight itself all right uh, so uh, i'll try to explain the placement strategy i did uh, in this fight uh, during the shogun of gava impertinence um, yeah as you can see i'm trying to place my team on the downside of the map or uh, at least in this corner so the, the corner where Zellor's Ram and Fogernaut is, is going to be the main place of action. Uh, yeah, so uh, first things in mind is to keep Kabushidos away because they do incredible damage CC. Uh, they do damage in range but not as much as in CC so um, yeah, I'll, 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 I talked about it in in, uh, in in preparation and introduction of the mobs uh, earlier. But um, yeah, so an another thing is you'll see in a couple of turns is uh, getting the boss itself next to uh, next to Zilor somewhere right there. Um, yeah, and just lock it in the corner. Uh, of course, I'm gonna speed forward. The entire fight, uh, and you will see how it, uh, how I, how I did that. Uh, but yeah, so the main thing that actually helped me gone through this fight was Sram's mist, um, and of course the lantern that you put and make uh, the rest of the mobs just pushed away. I didn't use it that much in this fight, uh, just because I almost managed to kill all the all the monsters before the boss, so that uh, lantern wasn't very necessary for uh, monsters. And if I kept my lanterns on from the start of the fight, I don't think I would be able to do impertinent challenge since the lanterns push away the mobs uh, far, far, far away and that would be a no-go but yeah uh, it was tricky at first uh, when I started it uh, just because I had to end next to an enemy and Kabushidos could kill me CC in like one turn um, 
so I was in debate. But as you can see right now, I noticed that I could just place the boss right next to me and uh, manipulate it so I can end the turn next to the enemy. Of course, Adida uh, healing, hitting as usual. Uh, Sram is placing traps for the Kabushido so I can just minimize the, their HP as much as I can until they get to me. Uh, yeah, so Zillary is pretty much mostly placement and I played a lot of strength uh, spells just to get it, uh, <laughs> get them killed pretty much. Yeah, uh, the mob Drumurai, uh, that's the other from Kabushido. Um, I kept him alive because that was the key monster I could end my turns to. Uh, there's gonna be another thing you will see in a video. Um, uh, I will leave the fight with my Foggernaut because I messed up the impertinence challenge and I managed to quit with only Foggernaut so I can save uh, the impertinent challenge for my zealer. So I quit it so, and the team didn't fail it. Only Foggernaut failed it. So I finished the fight as three characters. But yeah, it's it's not that bad of a dungeon actually. Uh, it's pretty doable. Just keep in mind about lanterns. Um, it's very important. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time Please research the the lanterns are the key things it making the boss vulnerable, but it can also be a very very good tool to keep other monsters away. Uh, but yes, um, uh, also I did a duo on this one. I didn't record it unfortunately, but but uh, as an introduction, more of it about this dungeon and how I did it with my 160 level Iron Man team. Um, yeah, I wanted to, to show you guys how I did it. Yeah, uh, once again, pardon for my for my English. <laughs> I can't really speak today, man, but it's fine. Yeah, and uh, enjoy the rest of the fight. Uh, I'll speed it up so so it won't be that uh, long thing to go. Oh, as you can see, of course, uh, the Kabushido just went right next to me and dealt like 1400 damage in one hit so you see they are very 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 uh, dangerous all right so enjoy the video and i talk too much and yeah <laughs> until the next one